Okay, let's begin with our Mahia. It's really, uh, sorry, our Mahia, which today is our weekly check-in. Really great for us to just do, just to kind of build those relationships with each other. And I do read them, so, you know, FYI. Um, cool. So let's have a little fun before we dive into the content. So I'll pick randomly. The first question is our random fun question, which is about if you could walk into any like fictional world. Actually, doesn't yeah, fictional world. Um, so book, movie, TV series. Uh, which fictional world would you want to walk into, and why? Person answering that question today is going to be lyric. Lyric. What fictional world would you like to walk into? Don't know. Nothing? Can't think of anything? Fast and Furious? Anybody else want to share what their world was? Should I pick someone else out of my jar? Pick someone else out of my jar? Uh, I heard a response right there. What world? <laughs> no? Wreck It Ralph? Oh, that'd be so cute! I think Wreck It Ralph would be great. Uh, I saw, I would personally pick Harry Potter, and I saw someone else pick Harry Potter as well. Um, and I saw also like Fast and Furious as like another world. I just thought it was a cool question when you think about like, what would I like to walk into? And that'd be kind of hard. Like, would I want to walk into uh, Harry Potter or like the Marvel Universe? But I feel like Harry Potter would be better because like, there's more wizards. Whereas, like, Marvel, like, that would mean I'd have to be a superhero, and I don't want that much responsibility. Anyway. Micro goal for this week, very important, because we are starting a new term. We have a lot of upcoming assessments in level two, I can tell you that, because we have bio and chem. Uh, person answering that is Pessy. What is your micro goal for this week? Do your work. Yeah, it seems to be a very common one that most people have. Very generic, do your work. So... What I want you, I'll oh, wait. Shh, gentlemen. So I know uh, we were just saying that, and I hear this from a lot of my classes, like, oh, my goal is to do work this week. Uh, make sure that you are specific with your goals. Um, so that way you have a guideline of what you're trying to accomplish. So that way you know whether or not you've ticked it off your list. If you just say do work, that's very general and very vague and very broad. Um, you should really start thinking about what assessments are coming up and that is the work you need to make sure you get done first or that's what you want to be able to tick off and like pat yourself on the back. I can tell you right now for the level twos, there's two things that are coming up and unfortunately they're coming up near the same point. Level two chemistry, some of you guys are in my chemistry class and we're going to be doing our assessment probably starting next week. I think you guys are more or less there. And then with you guys for biology, we're starting our assessment in week three. Now, it is a multi-day assessment because you're going to be doing a practical and collecting data and analyzing it. Uh, that's why I just put a general week one, or sorry, week two, week three kind of thing. Um, but do keep that in mind that you're going to have to switch gears and get yourself ready for those topics. Um, the good news is I am going to spend today's lesson really kind of going through the assessment with a fine tooth comb to explain exactly what you need to do for Achieve Merit and Excellence. Uh, and also what I would recommend you do as kind of like study preparation. Um, cool. Before I move on, anything that anyone wants to share? We're all good? Nothing? Okay. So uh, let's talk about our learning journey and what we are uh, now kind of thinking about. We're switching gears into our work mode. Um, so last term we talked about biological investigations and we did one practical which was the dialysis practical which those uh, dialysis tubes that you had and you put things in glucose and sugar water and you're just seeing how the water molecules are moving uh, and we we're just basically learning about the concept of uh, osmosis what we're going to be focusing on today is basically a debrief of that experiment i really want to go through it and kind of tell you guys about the assessment and how you're going to be assessed and what you need um, so it's a really kind of useful thing just to help you guys make sure that you understand what's coming um, in the following weeks. Uh, the good news is that we'll kind of debrief uh, the experiment you did last week. We'll do another uh, basically practice assessment and then the real assessment will be week three. So you still have another practice to kind of learn these skill sets is the good news. All right. And then lastly, it's our weekly Fakatoki. Um, okay. Um, 
se tu uh, tarake o te rangi. So, uh, Kerapas is visible at night in the open expanse of sky. Um, an outstanding individual is another way to kind of think of that whakatoki. Um, so now that we're back at school for this week, I want you to kind of have a chance to think about, you know, all the people that you're interacting with, your friends, your teachers, your things like that, and who is really like an outstanding individual, like your bright shining star. Also think about how you, you're going to be a bright shining star as well. Sound good? So just a little piece of life advice. Uh, lesson plan for today. First thing we're going to do is just, uh, I'm going to remind you guys of some of the routines and how I'm going to also adjust some of the routines after having a term with you guys. Uh, and then basically what I'm going to do is spend time going through the um, Google Slides to kind of break down the assessment uh, and give you guys some chances to work on it and finish it up because I know um, not a lot of it got done because was, everything was in a rush last term. Um, cool. And actually, this should be updated. We're actually going to do the whole idea of planning of the scientific method and also the analysis of it. Sound good? I'm going to apologize ahead of time. This lesson might seem a little bit dry and boring, but I really need to get through the guidelines of this uh, assessment. I've had a talk with Ms. Quigley just to help me understand the assessment better because it's my first time teaching bio, and I want to share what she has taught me so that way you guys know exactly what you need to do if you want to get achieved a merit or an excellence. But before we do that, let me just remind you guys of some routines. Make sure those phones are uh, in your bags or in a pocket. Um, if you need to look up anything, please use your devices to kind of Google it and things like that. Um, if you do want to use your phone, say, for example, you're using your SciPad and you're using the scanner to find the answers, let me know that you're doing that so that way I don't get like tell you off for using your phone in class because things like that I am happy to kind of negotiate on and things. But um, overall, if you should be having them in your uh, backpack or in your pocket and use your device to Google. Um, I noticed some of you guys have been charging phones on the side stations or off your computer, which isn't great for the computer because then your battery for the computer runs flat. Uh, to help you guys out, because I know it's really annoying when your phone dies, I do have a charging station in my um, closet. So feel free to give me your phone and you can charge it for the period. Uh, I have phone chargers and all the different cables and everything. So even if you don't have those things, I do have them. Um, so you're welcome to charge, but you got to charge it in my closet. Um, I also had some thinking about loan sharks and stuff. I decided that since you guys are seniors and a bit more responsible than the juniors, I don't need collateral items for the loan shark. And you don't need to talk to me about grabbing things. Just walk on up, grab yourself a pen. I want you just to just get started and going. Sound good? All right, the other thing I've decided is that since you're seniors, I don't think you guys need bathroom passes. I can trust you can self-manage. Um, the only thing that you have to remember is that you can't go in the first 30 minutes. Uh, you still do need to let me know or ask me if you're going. Uh, only one person's out at a time, and so the person that's gone out, I'm going to just put the um, hand sanitizer bottle at your desk so I know who's out, and I know if I already have one person out. Sound good? So those are some kind of routine reminders and some routine changes. Um, but I will keep the lolly charts going because I think that's a fun thing to get some stickers and also you guys get your treats. Cool. Doc. I should say the Google Sheets on Google Classroom. So first thing I want to point out to you guys is that I have posted a new lesson and I called it updated um, for B. So it's the exact same lesson as number four, except I've updated and given you guys new copies of the slides. And this is after Ms. Quigley and I had some time during the school holidays to work on it and to clean it up a bit and make it easier for you guys to understand the assessment. So I've made a new copy for everyone. You are welcome to open up the new copy and write your notes, or you can write it into the old one. The old one isn't too, too different. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Google Slides, I'm going to make a copy of it, and I'm going to comment on it so that way um, we have some notes. So basically the notes I'm writing will be on the Google Slides. Um, but it's going to be on my copy, not your copy. So do keep that in mind if you want to write down stuff type it in your version of the document. I will, though, make a, I will provide these notes at the end of the lesson. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. 
Cool. So, like I said, Ms. Quigley and I went through and we tweaked the um, the Google Slides uh, based on her feedback and also my experience with teaching as well. So, what we have decided is for the assessment, we will have you write your reports on Google Slides. The reason why is because it's easy for us to market that way. It's also very easy for you guys to know what the Achieve Merit and Excellence are, and it helps to keep things very organized. So what that means is that this updated version, the one you guys will get in the next experiment on surface area, and the final internal that you guys do uh, with the turnips, are all going to be the same format. Does that make sense? So you guys can get used to the format and you know exactly how you're going to be assessed. It was the same thing that I've been doing in chemistry. The thing that will change is the amount of scaffolding. So this first one, we've given you a lot of scaffolding to teach you guys how to do these skill sets. The next one on surface area will have a little bit less scaffolding. And then the one that you have for your actual internal will have no scaffolding. Are we okay with that so far? All right. The good news is that when you guys do the final internal assessment, you are allowed to look at your other resources because it's a report, it's not a test. So you guys can go back to this um, report and you can go back to the surface area report and look at what you did, look at the feedback that was given to you and use that as a reference when you are writing your final internal report. Does that make sense to you guys? The main thing that you guys should be doing in order to prepare and study for this is to make sure you complete both this and the surface area practice um, versions. Write up your answers, things like that. Let me know when you want me to give you feedback so that way you guys know what you're doing and you can look at that when you do your final. Are we good so far? All right, keep going? Okay. So. The beginning two slides that we have here give you a list of the requirements and it also tells you if these requirements go to achieve merit and excellence. Um, some things to kind of note is that there's two uh, lists. There's a list here for the work that you're allowed to do when you're in your pairs and there's a list of things that you need to do when you are working individually. So I've wanted to separate the skill sets so you guys are aware of what skill sets you really need to be able to do by yourself. Are we okay with that so far? All right. the other thing you'll notice is that things are highlighted differently. So if they're white, it does count towards achieved. Um, if it's grayed, it means there's no point for that. So for example, writing the purpose of your experiment and explaining your hypothesis, the maximum point you get is an achieved. Um, there's no merit or excellence point for it. However, something to remember is that for any of the higher grades, you need to get the grade below. So if you want a merit, you need all the achieved. If you want an excellence, you need to have the merit and the achieved. And when it comes to the final grade, you need everything ticked off. If you're missing one thing, then you won't get that grade. That's the unfortunate thing about uh, NCA. All right, I'll write that down as a comment so you guys remember that. When it comes to final overall grade, you need to tick everything off. Are we good with that so far? And I'll make that comment. All right, I might zoom it up a little bit so you guys can hopefully see things a bit better. And that's worse. There we go. Why is that not moved over? Oh, you can't really see those comments very well. Is there any way I can make that bigger? Huh, that's annoying. Anyway, you'll see it when I share it. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, whatever. All right, the next thing that I want you guys to be mindful of that I've done, stop doing that, is is that 
I have color coded the boxes. I'm just gonna, it's annoying me. I have color coded the boxes that you guys are writing in. So you'll see how some of these boxes are red, some of these boxes are blue and red, some of these boxes are just blue by itself, some of these boxes are green. Now the reason why I've color coded those boxes is so that way you know what the achieved merit and excellence requirements are. So if you see, if you see, where's my comment section? Comment. Uh, red boxes equals achieved. Blue boxes equal merit. And green boxes equal excellence. Are we okay with that so far? Ladies, ladies, when's the assessment? Week three. Week three. So do you think you should be mucking around right now? No, you should be listening, right? This is four credits. Let's get them. All right, so I have color-coded things, red boxes as achieved, blue boxes as merit, green boxes as excellence. So when you're going through these, you'll notice that there's, like I said, red boxes. So if you're aiming to pass, get a merit, get an excellence, regardless of whatever grade is, you need to fill in all the red boxes because you can't get a merit without the achieved. You can't get an excellence without the merit and the achieved. So if you see a red box, you have to fill that in. Um, so a lot of these have red boxes because they're achieved requirements. If you want to double check them, they're also written up here and they say it is an achieved requirement. Um, if you see something that has a red and blue box, what that means is that it is a requirement that goes up to the merit level, but has an achieved component to it. So. You can get marked either achieved or merit for that skill set. So the first one here, we see that blue and that green is the method. And if we look at the box checklist, and we see at the bottom here, the student can write a method with different variables. Now, I'm not giving you credit for it on this assessment because it's scaffolded. But in the next one, I'm going to start taking things away so I can use it as evidence. So in this case, we've given it to you, but you can see it has an achieved and a merit possibility. Are we good with that so far? So the difference between the achieved method and the merit method is the quality of the method. So this one here that is written is an example of what an achieved method would look like. Uh, the next one down here is an example of what a merit method would look like. And the main difference between an achieved mer um, method and a merit method is the quality of the instructions. A merit method, I will be able to carry out and I won't have any questions to like clarify. An achieved method, when I look at it, I would have questions because there's things I don't know. So I will write that down as a comment. So um, methods get marked at achieved if there's detail missing. If there's details missing. So basically what you need to think about is would the teacher have a question and ask you what are you doing? So for example, when I'm looking at this one, it says take three measuring cylinders measure 50 ml solution and second 50 ml of water and then third water water or sugar water well for one thing i don't know the size of these cylinders what size um cut 15 centimeter strips of dialysis tubes wet it fold it over and tie the ends pour five uh, 15 milliliters of solutions to each tube tie it off pour water in the other bag um, the other thing that I would be looking for is units. Um, place water in the measuring cylinder containing the sugar solution, like all these things here. It's, it is a set of instructions, I can follow it, but I might have some questions. So if I have to ask questions to understand your method, it's gonna get marked and achieved. This method here has a lot more details. So you see how I'm saying? This one actually tells me 
what size measuring cylinder to use, which the other one did not do. So these guys here have detail. This one has stuff like record the room temperature. This one also has like instructions on how to calculate. Whereas if you look at that first one here, it's not a lot of detail. Are we okay with that so far with method? So that's what I'm saying. These ones go to achieved and merit depending on the quality of it. Um, the other things you need to do for the achieved is writing the aim. Now we are giving you the aim for both practice ones. On the final assessment, you need to look at the internal um, and read the information both in the internal and in the introduction and figure out what's the purpose of that experiment. Are we okay with that so far? All right. Hypothesis, again, we have given you a scaffold. So I have, um, we have given you the I predict water will slash will not diffuse. This is all scaffolded for you. Again, on the final assessment, this box will be blank. So you need to write it on your own. Now you can access your old versions, your practice versions, to get an idea of what your hypothesis should look like. Are you okay with that so far? All right. Cool. Uh, in this case, with the variables, independent variables, what you're changing, dependent variables, what you're measuring, um, keep in mind that, again, we're going to give it to you initially, but as you guys uh, practice, we take the scaffold away, and you will need to write it in. Uh, same thing with these control variables. So we've given you guys a lot for that first one because it's the first time you've seen it, and then as you guys get more and more practice, things are going to get taken away. Um, cool, I think that's all I want to say about that. Uh, be mindful, there's a difference between control sample and control variables. So with control variables, we're talking about what things in your experiment do you need to keep the same to have a fair test. Control sample is a sample you use as your baseline. So for the dialysis experiment, that was putting a tube that was filled with water into a uh, measuring cylinder that also had water or the glucose and glucose one. That was a control sample because you had the same thing in both of them. And this, so just keep that in mind. Now you may not always have a control sample, um, but if you do, you got to explain what is your kind of standard. Okay? Are we okay so far? Shall I move on? All right, so I'm trying to see what I have on my to-do list. All right, so we've covered the uh, recapping, the aim, the hypothesis, the variable, and the method. Um, I'll give you guys about a five-minute break just to sit and chit-chat because I don't actually have anything for you guys to start working on. Um, I guess, in theory, you could go back and do a little bit of tinkering with this if you want, um, and then I'll talk about your results. Sound good? So I'll have a little break. All right, I'm going to keep talking about the assessment. Shh. Hold on. All right, so remember you are going to be allowed to work in pairs for this experience, uh, for this or for this internal, but that's only for a section of it. So basically the only thing you're allowed to do in pairs is what's up to this point here. So that's doing the experiment uh, and um, collecting your results. Everything from that point onward, you need to do by yourself. So making your data table, averaging, all of those skill sets needs to be done by you. You can't do that in pairs anymore, okay? So the moment you start processing data, you need to be, into, you need to be by yourself. So... Some things to kind of keep in mind for what you need to do for your uh, experiment and for your results. Uh, first off, you need to have a data table. What we have done for um, this assessment, or sorry, not this assessment, this version and the next practice version is we've given you an example setup of how to make your data table. 
<laughs> on the final assessment, we will give you the template for the data table, but we won't give you any of the filled in box detail. So you guys will need to put in this box detail. That's why we give you guys the image so you know what sort of things you should include. Um, and that's what you guys saw. In here's number four, the original. So with that original there, that's where your Google Sheets were. Now, if you guys remember with the Google Sheets, again, we gave you images of what you had to have for your data table, and you were typing it in and creating it. Just to kind of teach you guys that skill set. The next one we give you will have the outline of the boxes. So that's, a, that's gonna help you out, but we won't have any of this information in here. So you're gonna have to learn how to put what information where. Are we okay with that so far? All right, now in this case, we had two uh, data tables, uh, just to give you guys more practice, but the main one we wanted you guys to look at was the mass of the solution in the dialysis tubes. Now, if you guys notice, the data table and the graph um, are both given a blue and red box, and that's because you can get marked at achieved or merit. Gentlemen. I want to get you those four credits. You got to listen to me though. So, when we look at the marking schedule here, you see how these boxes have been merged. Basically, it gives you two opportunities to show me evidence. The first way you can show me your evidence is through the data table, and then the second way is from graphing. It gives you basically a backup in case you make a mistake, and a lot of people make mistakes on their tables. Now, some things to keep in mind between an achieved versus a merit level uh, table and graph is the removing of the outliers. Do you guys know what an outlier is? It's data that doesn't look good. So if we look at some of the data that we provided for you guys, You see how this one was highlighted yellow and it was removed from the average. So you should be doing that if you want to get a merit. You gotta look at the quality of the data and go, I'm gonna remove that one because that one's not good. So that's what we're looking at if you are aiming for a uh, merit. So kind of keep that in mind. So like I said, we can use it for both um, achieved and merit. The other thing to keep in mind is that you need to have units and you need to have a descriptive um, data table. So for example, when I'm looking down here, if you just wrote math, that's not descriptive enough. I need mass of solution in dialysis bag. You need to have detail. You gotta to explain to me exactly what it is. And the, not, the thing to think about when you're looking at data tables is can I tell what the experiment was about just by looking at the data table? If I can, then you have a good data table. So I'm gonna make a note here. Um, achieved requirement is having enough detail in the tables and graphs. So I should see things like um, so not enough would be if you just wrote mass, because I don't know what the mass is. Enough is mass of solution in dialysis bag. The hint for this is that anybody reading the data table should tell exactly what that experiment is about. So you have a good data table. If someone can read your table and know exactly what your experiment is about. Okay? All right, are we good? Keep going? 
Okay. So, uh, with the data tables, you're probably going to need to do a little snip tool in order to get it in there because you can't just copy and paste it over from Google Slides. Um, the other thing you'll need to do for your data collection is observations. Uh, so, you just like making note on if things are bigger or smaller, if the tube kind of lost uh, size and things like that. Um, Cool, and I think that's where I want to pause next in our talk. Yeah, cool. All right, so I want to give you guys a little bit of a break from me talking, and I want to give you guys a chance just to process. So what I want you guys to do um, is work on the um, results section of the um, Google sh uh, sh uh, Slides. So you can either work on the original, or you can work on the updated version and copy things over, that's fine. Um, remember that the tables um, and the Google Sheets that you had were from lesson number four, Dialysis Practical. So those things have still stayed the same. So I'll give you guys a little bit of time just to work on the slides and then I'll talk about the final bits that you need to do for this assessment. Are we good so far? All right, hop to it. Alrighty, cool. So, let me give you guys the last bit of information for this assessment. Now, I have recorded this, so if you guys want to watch this again for reference so you know exactly what you need for, to do for the Achieve Merit Excellence, it is available for you. Um, cool. So the last section I need to talk about then is the discussion section, um, and that's basically your like your write up and explanations. So um, the last thing you need to do to pass this assessment is a conclusion. So if you're only aiming for an achieved, you can actually stop at this point where it says conclusion, write the conclusion, and then you are done. You don't have to do any of the following uh, remaining bits. So let me show you what. Um, that means. So with the conclusion, you are stating the trend. And again, we've given you a scaffolded conclusion. We won't be giving you this on the actual assessment. So keep that in mind that this scaffold will disappear eventually. The good news is you can still go back to this um, practice and the practice that will be starting tomorrow um, as a reference point. So what we're looking for uh, for the achieved example is just talking about uh, some general what did you notice happening. The other thing you need to do for the achieved is compare it to the class results. So we will give you class results. Uh, the experiment might be slightly different, um, so that way you can write up your analysis and compare and contrast. Uh, but for the achieved, you do need to refer to the other data, so the data that's been provided for you, the class average data. If you miss that, then I can't pass you on it. So do kind of keep that in mind. So when I say the data that we provided, this is the example data that I provided for you guys for this um, practice. Um, and you're looking at the average that um, of what we've given you. So this is class data from um, last year. So do kind of keep that in mind. Um, there, with the conclusion, it can be both at the achieve level and at the merit level. So a merit level conclusion has a lot more detail. The main thing to kind of highlight as the more detail is they give me some numbers to explain the difference. So in this case, we're saying that not only has the mass changed, but by what percentage that mass has changed by. You're actually using the data that you've collected and giving me my um, specifics. Um, the other thing that we are looking for for a merit level conclusion is that you tie it back to your hypothesis and your aim to see whether or not you were correct. And again, you are going back to the class results and using that comparison. So merit, sorry, uh, conclusion, just like the method, does go up to the merit level. So the quality of it will decide um, what you can possibly get. Are we okay so far with that? So that's all you need to do for the achieved. If you are aiming for a merit or an excellence, you need to keep going. So for the merit, you need to be talking um, about the science and explaining the reasons why you saw those results. So for example, we've scaffolded it for you. 
But again, we're going to remove some of that scaffold. So you're talking about the science behind what's happening. We've given you some scaffolded examples to explain what's going on and why. And you see how in this case, for the merit, they have actually talked about the class results and explained their results versus the class results. So all these things here in blue is what we're going to need if you want to aim for a merit. Um, so do kind of keep that in mind. Um, so this case, it'll be the theory on osmosis. So all the stuff we talked about with osmosis, you need to write up and be able to explain. Uh, the next experiment that we're doing, the one we're starting tomorrow, is going to be on surface area. And then on the final assessment, you're going to be using both the knowledge of osmosis and surface area to write this discussion. So if you just want to aim for a merit, you're basically tying it back to your science ideas and you can stop here if that's all you want. If you want an excellence, you need to do one of the two uh, last slides here. So it's an or option. If you want to give yourself extra kind of backup in case you make a mistake, you are welcome to do both. So if you don't get the excellence on one of them, I can still give you the excellence on the other one if you write them both up. But if you just want to write up one, that's fine too, because uh, I only need one. So the excellence component for this assessment is the evaluation. And there's two different ways you can uh, show me that you've evaluated your experiment. The first one is checking the validity of the method. So you go through and you analyze your method and you tell me why is that method a fair test? what makes you confident that the results you got actually work. So you should be talking about uh, control variables, um, the investigation itself, um, that sort of stuff. So that's the first thing you can do. The second thing you can do is talk about the reliability of your results. So that's the other way you can get your excellence point. So with the reliability of the results, you are looking at your results and you're explaining to me how you know you can trust those results. So the first thing would be, did you do repeats? Um, if you repeated the experiment, that means you have more data, that means you can identify outliers. Also talk about how you removed outliers. So outliers are data that looks like really far out of the other data set. So, that's what we're talking about when we talk about reliability. So you're processing your data, you're removing things that you know look incorrect, and you're also explaining to me you know, why you've done it. Um, you do repeat so that way you can have an average. An average is a stronger amount of data than just doing the experiment once. The other thing you should be talking about if you're doing the reliability of the results is the range. So have you used a good wide range or um, that can allow you a good spread of data or is your range too narrow and thus you're only seeing a very small picture of what's happening? The other thing to think about with your range is like I said, upper and lower limits. So why is there an upper limit? Why is there a lower limit? And I'll write that in as one of the things to think about. Um, comment, upper and lower limits. So why did you pick the upper and lower limits? So stuff like that will help me see that you understand whether or not your results are reliable. Are we okay with that so far? And that's all you need to do for the excellence. But be mindful, if you want an excellence, you're going to have to get the merit stuff and the achieved stuff anyway. So you're going to be writing this, um, comparing the results and the scientific uh, theory behind your results as well. So. Um, I would suggest it's a it's quite a big jump to go from achieve to merit. It's not that big of a jump from going from merit to excellence. So if you're aiming for the merit, I would say give the excellence a go um, because it's not that much extra to do. Are there any questions or what questions do you have? All right. I will let you guys have the remainder. We have about 20 minutes and you guys can just keep working on this dialysis one. I'll walk around and answer questions. I'll give you some feedback. It's really important that you do work on these things and then you let me know when you're ready for me to look at them. So either comment or email me or send me a hangout message to let me know. Miss, can you give me feedback on and then tell me what you want feedback on? Um, because that feedback and don't um, resolve the comments so that way you can still see the feedback when you guys do the final assessment as well. Because remember, you can access this document and you can access the one we start tomorrow when you are running up your final one and that feedback could be helpful to help you know what to fix. Okay? All right. Rest of the time is yours.
All right. So Belle's gonna go soon. I need you guys to wipe down my tables. Uh, there's some cloths around. Um, I think that's mostly it for today. Uh, so to summarize, you guys should be able to know the guidelines of this assessment. So we'll do another practice one tomorrow.